Hail to the King, baby. We're back again with episode 13. We are so close to the end, and we are having so much fun doing it. Going down the line in this amazing 70-year journey of Godzilla. I am loving every bit of it, even the bad stuff. <laughs> well, maybe not 1998, but we don't need to talk about 1998. But we are talking tonight about the last two in the anime trilogy. City on the Edge of Battle and the Planet Eater. And we're going to talk about it. Trevor Stottlemyle from Ambassador Radio and Media is here. And of course, Sir Sturdy from Horror. Sir Sturdy and Popcorn and Pints is here as well. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk Godzilla. We're also going to talk about Godzilla X Kong, the New Empire. We're going to give our initial review rating sort of for it. Uh, we will get into it much more in depth few episodes from now so you're gonna have to stay tuned for that and we're gonna get really in depth because i can't wait for sturdy to watch the other preceding movies and tv show to it but until we get there we'll give you our ratings for it we're gonna do a whole bunch more so join in make sure you're hitting those comments and uh let's have some fun elder king how you guys doing today good thank you again for having me of course i always love talking to you guys especially well about anything really but movies is something that i think we have a lot of fun talking together oh yeah it brought us together but i'm doing good how's your day going good good i i i uh i am very excited to talk about these two movies for sure yeah and i i have purposefully not asked you guys in the group chat what you thought um about actually any of the movies i'm gonna ask you about tonight but um our you know our first movie is um zilla it's the city on the edge of battle uh i wanted to let's get into it so this is the second uh, after we just got out of the um the planet of monsters <clears throat> you know hyru is now had an unsuccessful attack against godzilla and has brought upon something much much bigger and more ferocious and uh yeah this movie sort of kicks off with uh, some very interesting and familiar things uh what did you guys think of this one again with the animated stuff i really enjoyed it just because again they can go in so many different directions without it looking yes i know it's animated but without it looking unbelievable to where you're just like oh my god no but they also did good with the story with this, in my opinion. Mm. And they connected it with the first one well. Like, I know movies have sequels, but they don't always connect very well. Even when they're supposed to be like a direct sequel. It's just like a whole different kind of... But no, it's like they're still here. Still the same story. And Godzilla is still a damn beast of a kaiju. <laughs> like a beast of a kaiju to where I'm just like, I don't even know why you guys want to be around this guy. Like, I... I'm just going to leave and I'll quit the job or whatever the case may be because we can't win. We had all these amazing weapons and you know how the third one ends. And then he <laughs> gets back up like you just threw a rock at him. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm done. I quit. But you're here. Not anymore. No, it's too much of a battle. But again, it draws you in as far as someone like myself to watch it like this. Again, this was awesome. This was awesome. I really, 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 really enjoyed this one. Like just from start to finish. I'm like, yes. Finally, finally, because we had some rough patches. Well, for myself personally, I had some rough patches going through these. Yep. But this one right here, thank you. Whoever created this, thank you. Seriously, thank you. Because this right here to me showed, but well, what it is, it kind of shows and reminds you of how good an animated movie can be and how serious an animated movie can be. And please, I want to see more animated. Of, I would like to see more animated Godzilla, honestly. I would love to see more animated Godzilla. Newer stuff, though, of course. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind seeing. Hear me out, guys. Hear me out. Minus one, exactly the way it was, but animated. Same movie, same story, same everything, but animated. I think it would be beautiful animated because this was. That would be an interesting one. I, I, I could see that. It, it'd be really kind of a cool. Yeah, that would be cool animation um, for sure. And I don't mean like overly cartoony animated and all like similar to this or like more of like that adult kind of animation. But like it's real, it's really taken serious, really beautiful, not looking too cartoony, not looking too blocky. But as beautiful as the movie was, let's just put in an animated. I don't know how to do all that stuff, Mick. You know this, but let's just make it animated. I don't know if there's like a switch you could do or whatever. I have no clue. <laughs> not that easy. Uh, <laughs> right for some, uh, AI program, so. Well, I would prefer if you're going to animate it, maybe make it uh, look a little more like that than like mm -hmm. this. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of Godzilla's little, look. Little, <laughs> little coat tape that he had. Um, I, yeah, 
yeah. Uh, but that that that's my take on his look. But uh, Trevor, what do you think about the uh, second installment? Well, I have to say that because I have to, you know, consume these as three. They're they're mm -hmm. they're, they're just continuous three, and they're. Uh, they they were the biggest surprise for me. Um, I think they are the most Western of the Godzilla films um, outside of the Roland Emmerich thing uh, because it's a very existential. Uh, the films are painfully existential. I mean, this has got some serious existential dread in it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the Jungian Godzilla. So it's like Western philosophy as you know, channeled through Godzilla. And there's so much going on just there, just in, you know, the idea of God. What is God? What is evolution? Um, you know, what is time travel? Does time travel make something, you know, different? How a person can become a martyr without even wanting to be a martyr to the point that they're manipulated. There's just so much stuff. Um, but I loved it. Uh, it was that key or that little missing piece of Godzilla that truly made it a human story. Mm. Um, so that, that I mean, that's what fascinated me more than actually Godzilla. And that Godzilla was an archetype for you created this this many you know years in the future godzilla looks the way he does because he's basically become part of the planet and you know that there's there are so many levels of balancing good and evil uh two different alien races and it's just, it just it's so much it was like i don't know um it, it was just it just did it, it was it was a lot to take in it was, and I thought they handled all of it really well. I thought they balanced all of it really well. Uh, and and you know what? We can. We can kind of go into... I'm going to start talking more about elements that I saw in the second movie first, but mm. you're right. There, it's all one big movie, so it's it's hard to not call back to the first and, and mm. talk about the second. But um, So please, feel free. You know, I, I don't want to just limit us to any one thing. Um, but to to start off with this, to, to they've added so many wonderful elements from the Godzilla universe mm -hmm. that it I liked and it made sense. So we as soon as you meet the twins, you know Mothra's exists. She she's out there and it's amazing. And so, like that gives you a grounded feel when we start this movie to godzilla and humanity being back on earth after we spent so much time in space in the first one uh i love how they use mecha godzilla in this one yeah you know turn him into a city mm -hmm. um that essentially is is, is is death is killing everything that they're trying to build um and then and just going into that third one with Ghidorah and the use and how they used Ghidorah in it such a that beautiful was twist that was interesting yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed what they did with this trilogy. Mm -hmm. How they used Ghidorah in the third one when he was attacking Godzilla. That I was like, whoa! Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what to say or do. I was nervous for Godzilla, but now I'm like, all right, listen, man, we need to help Godzilla. <laughs> even though just a few minutes ago I'm talking about something, I'm gonna leave because this. But now I'm just like, look, man, this. This bothers me. I love Godzilla. I just don't want to be around him. <laughs> but I don't want anything to happen to him at the same time. And you're seeing this, and you're like, it's like you're seeing this powerful thing just be nothing, pretty much. Just can't do anything. And you're like, what 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 am I supposed to do? How can I help? What can I do? What can I do to this to this thing that's doing this to Godzilla, which I know I can't beat. We can't beat. But now we want to help Godzilla. It was but it was just interesting to see it like that. Because I've never, like, through all the movies I've watched, I have never seen him. Yes, I've seen him lose. Yes, I've seen him get beat. But not like that. Mm -hmm. Not like that. That was just, like, a perfect, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're playing Street Fighter Mortal Kombat. It's, like, the perfect KO. It didn't get touched. <laughs> Getting beat up bad. Like, that's, I was embarrassed. <laughs> but I loved the movie at the same time. But it's just, like, this is bothering me that he's losing. Why? Yeah. He shouldn't be losing like this. I don't care if he loses here and there, but not like this. So you can't do anything. That's what I loved about it. The the fight the fight wasn't 
Godzilla's in this. It was human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had to fight this out. They had to make that. He and 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 I, that's why I loved Haru's character and his backstory in this, and and his hatred of Godzilla, and ultimately not just having to choose to help Godzilla and realizing why he needs to exist, but then having to be destroyed by Godzilla because you are the villain. Mm-hmm. It's um, it, it, Japanese. It, it, man, they it, are really powerful dramatic uh mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> that's for sure yeah, yeah but with the second movie it's the first time you really start understanding the dissidence between the races uh or species pardon me between the species uh that are on this ship and who left um the 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 earth um the bella ludo uh which are very vulcan in my opinion um mm. but with that over logic that they have leads them to become in their own way very greedy and they even admit to it uh the idea that one would think they could actually defeat a monster like godzilla you have to believe that you are as good if not better and that is impossible um so there right there you have the you know you go from we trust these alien races to mm-hmm. they're automatically being a pullback once the nanotechnology takes a uh, uh, place and it becomes more and more well we understand this so you guys stay in the corners we gotcha and human logic would be wait this is all sounding like you're going to be in control you you have all the keys so that's like the first little element uh we really see as far as a schism or schism between um uh the humans and the bellagios mm-hmm. uh whatever they're called mm-hmm. uh out of the exif which are you know they're immensely religious they have this strange religion that is like all religions are painfully vague and everything and they you know kind of try to keep everybody together but yet again haru which is hope basically has to navigate you know all these pre-existing you know things that these different species have going on I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like a mini civil war almost, uh, existentially between, uh, these three species and, you know, Haru, um, it was not a surprise that he eventually decided to, you know, kill himself. Uh, the real surprise for me was he killed himself with the hope that he would not harm the, uh, native population of the world yeah. which is a big thing is you know it's, it's an imperialism uh trope of you know these people come in and they you know see a version of them and try to take over um he feels by just ending the story he might allow them but by mm-hmm. doing so he becomes a martyr to them which is implied in the hidden uh ending of the film so yeah yeah it's it's oh. God, the story, and that, that's the thing. Out of all the Godzilla we've been watching, and when everything's kind of pieced together really well, um, <clears throat> we've seen we've seen some good stories kind of um and follow-ups uh kind of commence throughout but this might be the best overall story arc mm-hmm. i think between the tri- this trilogy you mean what does it mean to be yeah. human that's that's the the overall theme in the films i feel you know what is humanity how do we define humanity? Uh, mm-hmm. What has humanity done to bring itself here? What can humanity do to fix it or cannot? And what are the responsibilities of the generations that are still living with the guilt of the horrors of the past, like nuclear bombs and the creation of monsters? Um, as I said, this one is a real existential trip. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I, I was kind of thinking, you know, I'd be able to do other things and watch this. I'm just like, <clears throat> wow. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was beyond impressed. Yeah, I, w- I really was, too. And, and it actually, it re- once I realized, because the one thing that really kind of threw me off a bit, well, first of all, 
I'm going to complain about my uh, my wonderful oldest son and uh, co-host of Warp Factor Fiction Podcast. A little cheap plug there, but uh, how dare he? I watched the first two films in in Japanese, and listen, I don't mind that, but it was a very busy week, so if I can watch them dubbed, I kind of need to. I watch it's like then I can pick up on things a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't when I have to read stuff, I can't always pick up on everything. And I didn't pick up on two different alien species. I thought they were humans and just like the, the one alien species. Beludos and Exifs. Yeah, the Exifs, I thought yeah, I thought the Exifs were just religious humans. No, they're they're actually a separate species. Oh no, no, I figured that out by the by the yeah. third movie, I figured that out. But in the first movie, I that's how I thought it, it kind of blended. Mm-hmm. So so by the time you get to that second and third movie, you realize what you're dealing with the three different factions. Mm-hmm. And then like you were saying with those implications, and the fact that it was the elderly humans that were shipped off, and those three different factions made those choices. And now you see why Hyru, like, oh my god, it was still well done. And I did it makes it an allegory for any time. I yeah. mean, there are three or four major issues in the world today that this film could be an allegory for and back continually. And of course, as an allegory for as a human, how should we live in the future? You know, what if you are the human that is faced with such massive decisions, Mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, especially considering uh, the Belludio or whatever um, were, you know, constantly, you know, blaming him for everything that was done because he, he just listened to that humanity yeah. and you know that yet again they were very vulcan uh there was a lot of uh, i thought there was a lot of references to star trek in this alien um the kind of off the cuff but the design uh as far as the uh when they attack godzilla reminded me very much of brazil um oh wow oh wow yeah, that's a really cool comparison Mm. Okay. Wow. See another one, Trevor. I like it. It's a, it's, there, there was just a lot. There was uh, definitely influence. Yeah. In this. I mean, it, it it definitely. I mean, there was there was almost like a contact feel to it. Also, mm-hmm. it was you no know, because it, it was part of it. It felt like that new, not new, but that resurgent genre of hard sci-fi. And then the biggie is the similarities to do yeah that's very true yeah yeah they're very good movies i i highly yes recommend it. are the benny jesuits and the story yeah it's true and haru <laughs> is um atreides and if you look in and how the books go and everything uh there is a, 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 a he does make a bad decision he keeps going in a bad decision but this gets to that point in which he could become like the the fascist Paul Atreides, but he chooses not to. Yeah, he chooses actual yeah. heroism. Yeah, so which this, is ironic. That all that kind he... of pop culture references mixed in with this massive existential message, and it was which wonderfully is... media. <laughs> So, so interesting you say that to compare it to Dune and 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 because it's such a simple story. I mean, the same story they used in uh, it's a hero's journey. So for anybody mm-hmm. watching, like it's the uh, same thing that was used in Star Wars and many other tales. So um, yeah, I mean, it's a one that 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 was such a great story to use for a trilogy in Godzilla mm-hmm. and and the way they did it, and and for the Japanese to use suicide at the end as a as sort of their means for him to to like you said to to, to sort of choose the other way to not become that yeah uh fascist to, to try to take as much of your fingerprints off the current situation as possible because you see by putting you know those hands in the pot of that time period and the evolution of that you know the the the, the natives and you know the planet in general you have changed it mm. so to have this sudden epiphany of oh i i can't stay with you i have to do this and you know i i even take what little is there as far as evidence that i was there uh the all but dead body that will never die um you know it's the you know it is like imperialism and when you pull out of a country um you should you shouldn't have done it to begin with but you know it's just okay back up and you know it doesn't always work that way most of the time it doesn't sorry what you're rating for this one for uh two and three or for, no, two and for the whole trilogy 
Like, what, do you think, what do you think people should? Uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, you should definitely check it out. Um, going on your scale, a four for the trilogy. Wow, wow. that's high, high. Yeah, I, 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 no, I, I really like it, and just the way that they tie in together with the back to back to back. And honestly, I think it's something cool to wear, like if you have kids and they yeah. love animated stuff, and you this is like the perfect thing to watch with your kids right here. Perfect Godzilla thing to watch with your kids. If you don't, if they're not in all the live action stuff or, or the older stuff and all, I think this right here can make some kids fans of Godzilla. Love or that you Carl said that. <laughs> Which one? Or Carl Jung. It's great, it's fun for the kids and everything. But I mean, the the intense existential question, which the big one for everybody is, what is God? And you know that's. Like, you know, here, this is a great fun Godzilla movie, but let's have these big talks. So Yeah. I will okay, so I can I can fix that for you. Okay. <laughs> and here's how I watched like I said, I watched first two movies in Japanese and I totally got that message. Mm -hmm. I watched the third movie in English dub, but with the subtitles, um, actual Japanese what they're saying. So I got the best of both worlds, right? I do that mm -hmm. all the time. Almost everything. Um, and <laughs> wildly, like if you watch it with your kids, watch an English dub because it's wildly different from the existential ones. <laughs> so um, it's just because the way we talk versus the way oh, yeah. Japan talks, like it's um, you know, and just different translations for things. So um, I still I, I agree. Like like I watched this with Tommy, and man, he had such a great time. And he's like, and he he's been loving all everything as we watched it. He's mm -hmm. just been like, this is like a great story. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, I love this beginning, middle, and end. He's like, I love the animation of it. I love the characters. Mm -hmm. You know, like he really got in depth about this. Whereas normally it's like, this is fun. You well, know? it had the best pacing of anything we've seen, uh, mm -hmm. minus minus one. And, you know, even, I mean, it, 54 is 54, but mm -hmm. it's a cohesive story that has no downtime. It is constantly keeping your attention. Mm -hmm. uh, the, these were probably the, the most successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And uh, and again, I'm with you guys 100. percent I would give this. I'd give the whole trilogy a four. I'll do four too. Yeah. So I okay. definitely say check it out as well. Um, you know, be, uh, but yeah, it's over on Netflix. Like you said, check it out. Uh, we are going to get into what we watched this weekend, which is still out in theaters, and I think. Uh, We'll be able to tell you whether we want you to go see it in theaters or not. And that's Godzilla X Kong, the new empire guys. Um, let's uh, it's the cul it's kind of the culmination, but I think they're going to definitely be going on with it of this, uh, this franchise right here mm -hmm. kicked off with Godzilla, then Kong skull islands, uh, Godzilla King of the monsters, Godzilla versus Kong. And now the new empire, as we just said, those are all the films and Monarch legacy of monsters um it's uh and we're and we're covering them all here on this show so mm -hmm. we will be talking about them but i, I want to get initial reviews we all saw it in theaters this weekend what are we uh what are we thinking um should i kick us off or you, who wants to kick us off That'd be great all right um amongst my godzilla watches i will tell you i had some goddamn fun with this one mm -hmm. I brought Jack uh Mary and I brought Jack to see it unfortunately Tommy's away well not unfortunately happy he's away with his dad uh for the week but uh, and I now will take him when he gets back but nice. you know Jack's face my face um it was I'm not saying it doesn't have his issues and I I'm gonna get really in depth with that with my review this week on the podcast but and I'm gonna really get in depth with it on the episode that we we, we go into but it, I say if you're a fan, go see this in theaters. I really like it. How about you guys? Dirt. Um, so I, I had a great time with this movie. Me and the wife went and watched it. I think it's like our 13th movie this year. And it was just I really I really I had a good time with it. I liked it a lot, honestly. I liked it a lot. And it's what first thing I said after I watched the movie when I texted you, Mick, I was like, I gotta see more Kong now. <laughs> like I gotta see more Kong now. But it, it was it was a fun story. It was a cool story. The human element. We'll get to that next. You know when we talk about it, actually. But I, I had a good time with it. The I really did. I, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, the, the human element of it. But I was like, you know what? Let oh, me no, save, that know, for I'm, I'm, I'm save that for the review, <laughs> or for the you know for the discussion. But I, no, I, I had a good time with it, and the wife really enjoyed it. And it was just, it was fun. 
Pussy, go away. <laughs> That's I never you don't hear that very often, do you? So. Ever. <laughs> go away. <laughs> uh, maybe if you're Diddy. Just staying in there. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, yeah. And I agree with you, Mick, that um, if you're, if you're a fan of the, the Kaiju just in general, it's definitely something you should go see in theaters. It's definitely something you should go, just because it's just a fun, epic battle to watch. Overall, seeing, again, seeing these big-ass things on screen, yeah, go see in theaters, people. And you're still two movies behind. Yeah. So, like, you haven't even, like, seen the, like, the, the, the really, like, list. in my opinion, one of the best in the franchise, and, uh, and then, like, the pre, the precursor to this one. Yeah. I don't so, know. I'm interested to see how you feel about those. I will, but I'm gonna wait till, uh, you know, down well, the road. Ne- those are next week, so you're good. <laughs> oh, oh no, no, I, I, I just mean the Kong movies in general, like just because again, this may, movie made me want to see the Kong movies, and with us going through all the Godzilla, I'm happy that going into I didn't go into this movie 100 percent blind. Like at least I knew all the Godzilla stuff up to this point. Enough Godzilla stuff. I don't know everything. I don't remember everything, but I knew enough. Like when they mentioned certain things, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that man. Oh, I remember that guy. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember this one. And then you got this one shooting ice. I'm like, who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, Mick, where are you? <laughs> hey, new to us, too. <laughs> Shimu, the puppy dog of the uh, Godzilla universe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, um, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but when at some point one character goes like this, and like scratches his chin i'm just like come on i was like this thing's supposed to go up against godzilla (laughs) that's like that's like sending my puppy against godzilla um but no i did i really did enjoy um everything with that had to do with the monsters the human element was not strong for me um and we're we can like i said we can get into that because like we're two weeks out from talking about it so it's yeah like we're gonna get real in depth and i want to keep everybody who's watching this episode lingering for that one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> give him a real yeah. cliffhanger but i did want to show you some cool stuff i found so. wait 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 wait, wait, wait oh, oh trevor didn't say you, what you thought yeah the freaking the kaiju legend the guy who wrote all these movies and gave listen, the ideas to listen, you know listen i deserve that Look, he does well, Go ahead and i had to make it. myself i deserve that oh, okay you're lucky i'm not logged in because i would have did it you, get, you throw yourself <laughs> you get thrown out when you, you're an idiot well, <laughs> It oh, wasn't a great, great movie. I'll put it right there. It wasn't great, but it was an amazing amount of fun. Um, it basically tried to fix all the complaints the fans have had. Mm-hmm. The movie wasn't too dark. It was too light, actually, in my opinion. Um, there were much more battles. Um, yeah, just basically everything that, you know, people for years have been saying, well, you know, it would be just fun to have a Godzilla or Kaiju movie that is just like as little story and as little plot as possible, but the, these, these Kaiju just go at each other. And this movie did it. Um, I mean, the the characters are more hollow than hollow earth. The (laughs) plot is also as hollow, but it is fun. And you know, honestly, I really want to rewatch this on a smaller screen. And I'll tell you why. Is this film is so full of Showa references. The yes. whole movie is a Showa reference. Mm-hmm. And I just feel that it would even make more uh sense as a tribute to the Showa era on a smaller screen because that's how we digested those movies um i really like it but a lot of people i could see being kind of turned off by it is we've hit the point in the franchise that was about mid showa era that you start having monsters that are having personifications and they're now telling the story Hmm. better than the actors and you Mm -hmm. know you have like these weird bonds between kaiju and uh it, it, you have family concepts even introduced in this film with kong and his was it was it kong as savior because he frees his people uh, while riding on the back of shimu and you know 
Dude, I'm telling you right now, they're gonna make a <laughs> Song of Kong movie, and I'm fine with it. I'm 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 cool with this. I'm cool with that. Would make sense. I thought it was like kind of a Mina reference, but yeah, I will definitely say that the Kong in this film has aged. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know that would make sense. I am. I please. It's doing well. It's well rated. It's. Mm. I don't need. Listen for anyone who's complaining, and I'm gonna. Uh, this I speak for me. I don't speak for Trevor, and I don't speak for Sturdy. I only speak for me when I say this. Uh, for anyone who's a Godzilla fan and is bitching that the human element is terrible uh, and the plot is terrible. Well, first of all, I disagree. I think the plot of the movie is sound mm-hmm. when it comes to the animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, i think i think the humans just make the movie too long <laughs> mm-hmm. so i think yeah, that they yeah. just make it much longer than it needs to be but fine um that's the only thing it's like like the conspiracy theorists they're yeah they're there for their plot device they're there to explain shit it's like this could be slightly interesting but you're going for all like okay this guy's gonna have all the low-end humor in the film which he okay. had to have been there for name because yeah. the, he in the last movie, which you guys will see in, in Godzilla vs. Kong, he was in that, and it made sense why he was in. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, and I really liked what it was going about it. And then this one, they it just they Ghostbusters two him is really mm-hmm. what they did. Yeah. Well, uh, as I said, it is fun. So you know, say things I'm not criticizing it. Um, but you know it it was too much yeah uh my daughter fell asleep my father was bored to tears uh my son uh was hilarious uh ended up crossing his legs and sitting like this the whole time he was just so and i honestly found it very funny um yeah, yeah it's yeah it, it's, it's like, a fun movie it just it might just be a little too much I'll tell you what, I, I was completely fine. I am not going to argue. I was completely fine with all the human stuff. It should have been cut down. It was too much. To, I know they were there for, but because I've seen so much Godzilla in a short period of time and all the human elements in Godzilla, especially in the Showa era, just didn't really mean much. I was fine with it, but it brought us Mothra in this movie. Mm-hmm. And Which I want to mention one thing about Mothra before we stop talking. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. Please, please. I just wanted to say that, like, and and whether that's a surprise for anybody or not, it's it's fucking. First of all, calm down. Um, secondly, they showed in the trailer. Uh, secondly, um, Mothra's been in like three of the movies that have led up to this by now. Calm down. So uh, <laughs> you, uh, by the time you get to this, I was fine with it. I was like, the only thing was it was too long with the humans. I wish they just kind of, you know, let it go and let the animals do the work. Kong was doing fine. Yeah. Kong led the movie perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. More I, personality than every one of the humans. I agree with that. I agree with that. The human element could have been a, a hell of a lot less, but I know we'll get there. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to talk too much more on it because we do have a whole episode to discuss it. I want to. I, I just want to point out two things real quick. Yes, please. Um, well, one's a, and I. So I left the movie feeling like I had just watched a mashup of the Monster Universe with Guardian of the Galaxy. Oh, I actually think that is a good thing. Yeah, it's a very good thing. That's interesting. Bad this shows you where there are major holes in the plot that I think are purposely put there. I think it, it wants to have a lame-ass plot. Because yet again, I think it might be that much of a tribute to the Showa-era stuff that you have the Mecha Hand. Because the Mecha Hand was this you know kind of Mecha Kong thing that was being worked on, and it was just in case. Well, just by mistake... The right hand that Kong needed, well, that part happened to be shipped to Middle Earth by mistake. So <laughs> we got this Kong. Don't worry. Really lame. But I thought it was hilarious in the long run. And also, mm-hmm. another thing they fixed, they fixed Mothra's wings. Yeah. She had beautiful wings again. I know. Yeah, it was. They were too dark. And uh, uh, I really loved how it looked they looked like did. an ad. It was like Mothra the mosquito. That's true. <laughs> Mothra the mosquito. <laughs> She deserved better, um, and she got oh, better. Dear. So uh, they did a good job with that. I do agree. Um, I did want to show. So my son, like I said, had an amazing time with it. He did have to finally come to me and say, "Dad, I like Kong better than Godzilla," and I had to throw him out of the house. He's only seven, unfortunately, but I figure <laughs> he lives with me now because I'm with him. 
<laughs> I like better, better too, and you know. Uh, no, I I it's told him the old fart, but I kind of like that. No, it, listen, I I was because his older brother loves Godzilla, so I was like, you know what? I wasn't gonna do it, but I bought it. I got the popcorn bucket, nice, the one that splits. I like it. There you go. Uh, they can have it at home, and they can uh, they can play with it a little bit. But I, I I did find some stuff that I thought was cool that I'd share with you before we go. First off, there we go. I love it. I thought this was a beautiful uh, shot that I um. That's awesome. I wanted to share with you guys, but uh, that's awesome. It's it's kind of like that picture right there is what Civil War in the comic books was, mm -hmm. and then when you go and watch it in the movie, <laughs> it's like what Civil War in the movie was. <laughs> uh, still enjoyed it, but still, they're doing this in London for the premiere. Oh, cool! So I they love did that. like some cool, like you know, this is Kong. Uh, you know, he's coming up from the ground and. You know, better shot of it oh, and you can like take your picture with it and stuff and then oh, of course man. this thing like is motoring around the channel you know i just thought that was pretty cool that's awesome that's Thanks more than pretty that, that's so freaking awesome and i i love the film is doing gimmicks yeah I and mean, that's, that's that, something that's, that, that you know uh, it, there's such a long history of film gimmicks but you know we haven't really done that a lot for the past couple decades i mean for us 3d was the gimmick um you know, but um, we need to do more. It, it's really awesome to see. It also gives you an idea of how much of an iconic character both of these monsters mm -hmm. are. Yeah. And, and and even just the score and, and the audience score being in the 90s for this, it's amazing. Before, before, I, I hate to bring it up, but I'm going to forget about it. Please? Did anybody <laughs> get slightly disturbed by the score motif that sounded very much like Stranger Things? I did. I felt that a little bit, especially like I think when they were going through the the portal, I felt it, but I was it didn't it didn't hurt. It, it just was kind. Of, it stood out in a way that I I wasn't. So I will say I wasn't really pleased with the score. He had a lot of '80s like vibe and synth and look to it, so that I I mean I didn't. I thought that would have been better if your human ele element was better. Like if I liked your team more, and you know, like I just didn't care. I mean, like yeah. your team, like it wasn't the Guardians of the Galaxy. It was just a bunch of people thrown together that you want me to care about, you know. And I know Rebecca mm -hmm. Hall has been there, and I don't mind the little girl, but like, I mean, it's just like, where was Millie Bobby Brown? She, I cared about her from the other movies, you know. Like, where's you know all this stuff? Where's Andrew Skarsgård, you know, stuff like that. So I, oh, I just nice. or <laughs> actually, where anybody from the TV show that you just gave me that was brilliant that you could have like gotten with your writers and really put something together that really like we just watched your tv show the first season and now we're seeing people from it in this movie but whatever in continuity by hollywood <laughs> that's very fair that's very fair right. oh my god we gotta keep all this shit straight with monsters no we don't want to deal with humans so. <laughs> found this one too nice oh one. that's wonderful Godzilla and Kong. Godzilla Kong it. slash. And I found um, I, somebody did a stop motion on TikTok. I thought it was very clever with some some of the Godzilla toys. It's a little explicit. So if you're a kid listening at home, or watching. cover your ears or watching at home. Here. Oh, come on, man. You can do better than that. Smack your goddamn daddy. Uh, yeah. Let me show you how to smack this motherfucker. You're going to give back everything you took. <laughs> I oh, love those clever little uh, videos that people put together with those things. And you saw a lot of them. I saw the I saw this at the Alamo, and they did some very cool things with it. Um, you know, being able to uh, you know go check that out, uh, see their videos that they do before and things like that. Yeah, it was just very cool. So I had uh, I, I do want to show you guys. I did also pick up the glass. Nice. <laughs> had a very cool glass at the Alamo. So. I put it in my part of my oh those that's i like that a lot yeah those things were, so it was a cool little glass and the popcorn bucket's going to the kids though <laughs> i promise <laughs> but um i want to say thank you guys again uh guys go check out ambassador radio and media uh trevor over there is doing some great things you're gonna get some great information man he knows his stuff and if you want to be entertained by some crazy ass old movies, especially in the horror world, you want to go talk to this guy right here, our first thirty. Uh, and <laughs> Popcorn and Pints is also uh, with the regular mainstream movies, doing some killer stuff, rating, reviewing, and it's always a fun time. Sturdo Vision was insane last weekend. Go have a fun time with that, um, guys. I always appreciate you being here, being a part of this, and uh, well, thank you for having. Me. It's an honor to be here. Also, it is. 
Um, and I, yeah, I just appreciate you guys, uh, you know, um, doing what you do, being creators, being out there and, uh, informing and being part of it and entertaining as well. Uh, it's so amazing. And, uh, thank you all of you for supporting us along the way. Um, we appreciate you. So make sure you go hit like, hit subscribe and hit that bell. So, you know, there are other great episodes of this and other great shows and our channels and more. So, but you'll never know what's out there unless you subscribe. So, uh, all the links are down below in the description. Thank you guys for following. Uh, make sure if you like this design or any designs I'm wearing on my shows, go check out snobsmerch.com. Use snobs as your promo code for 10% off your order. And you can join up on our Patreon. We've got some great stuff going on over there. Tons of great perks. Discord is available wide open. Everything's down below in the description. Until next time, I'm Mick Manhattan from the Scene Snobs. This is Horror Sir Sturdy and Popcorn and Pints, Sir Sturdy himself, the man from Ambassador Radio and Media, Trevor Peace Dottemeyer. And we will talk to you next week on Hail to the King, 70 Years of Godzilla, baby. Yes. Yes. Peace. Bye.